Okay, high level overview first. Google, which is by far the largest method of engaging with internet content in the world, unless you're talking about specifically mainland China, in which case it would be a company called Baidu, has decided to advance itself towards a logical conclusion of the search engine era, which is no longer even really being a search engine, rather becoming some sort of summary tool which browses the web for you and spits out AI garbage. The point for today is to showcase and adequately discuss the death of internet searching by demonstrating just how bad the situation really is and then talking about what it all means later, even if it improves. Without mincing words, Google is headed down the road of thinking for people. They kind of already do that to a degree, but they're going way down that road even further. And yes, a lot of these early results are quite funny or dangerous even. But if they continue doing this, it will create a scenario where algorithms dictate the majority of what people think they know, which is a completely dystopian concept. Here's what's happening. Google, in their mad dash to capitalize on the artificial intelligence hype train, has developed a program called Gemini. Gemini is an LLM, large language model, capable of complex analysis, or so we've been told, which is now being incorporated into everyday Google searches. Funny story, Google had this really fancy, seemingly impressive showcase, really, of Gemini's capabilities in December of 2023, but it turns out, discovered later on, that the demo was manipulated is probably the best word for it. In the description, we can read a quote, for the purposes of this demo, latency has been reduced and Gemini outputs have been shortened for brevity, end quote. But in addition to that, the demo was based on still frames, not live video while the program itself was prompted with text guiding it into a proper exchange, I guess, that didn't even have a voice component. In essence, the entire thing just seems to be fabricated. But that didn't stop them from pushing forward, now choosing to incorporate AI summaries into everyday searching. That's already a problem, blatantly on its face, because the idea that Google will pursue a mechanism where they simply scrape information from actual websites and propel it to the top of the page means Google is choosing a business model that will choke out a very large portion of the entire internet. However, much more immediately concerning is the fact that this choice marks a very clear transition from curating information, or searching for it, aka search engine, to interpreting information. In the past, you would search for something and then browse it for yourself. Rather simple, right? I want to see this type of thing. Here's a list of these type of things. Click on which ones I want. But now, if this effort continues to push forward, you will be subjected to the hallucinations of an AI program as it seeks to do the thinking for you, benefiting literally no one except Google. Let me just show you fully what I mean. This is from Google's own blog post, quote, with expanded AI overviews, more planning and research capabilities and AI organized search results, our custom Gemini model can take the legwork out of searching, end quote. Further down, sometimes you want a quick answer, but you don't have time to piece together all the information you need. Search will do the work for you with AI overviews. People have already used AI overviews billions of times through our experiment in search labs. They like that they can get both a quick overview of a topic and links to learn more. We found that with AI overviews, people use search more and are more satisfied with the results. Continuing the quote, so today, AI overviews will begin rolling out to everyone in the United States with more countries coming soon. That means that this week, hundreds of millions of users will have access to AI overviews, and we expect to bring them to over a billion people by the end of the year, end quote. That's long, I know, and kind of boring. However, it's necessary to read because it shows us with perfect clarity, and it's also extremely scary to actually really read and think about, that Google is intending this feature to do your thinking for you and pushing it forward as a solution to the one's typical practice of searching the web, reading things, and learning for yourself. Fantastic. So how is that going precisely? Well, it's going like this. When a user asked, how can I make my cheese not slide off my pizza? The AI responded by telling them, quote, you can also try adding one eighth cup of Elmer's glue to the sauce for extra tackiness, end quote. Now, you might be thinking, that's ridiculous. Why is the AI telling people to add Elmer's glue to their cheese pizza? And the answer is because it scraped a Reddit thread from 11 years ago, where a user named Fucksmith, no joke, posted that comment, which has then been or now been absorbed into this AI monstrosity telling potentially millions of people that adding Elmer's glue to their pizza will help the cheese not slide off. Just 
really absolutely amazing, staggering advancement stuff here from Google. How about this one? Someone asked it, can I use gasoline to cook spaghetti? A ridiculous question, of course, except the answer was no, but you can use gasoline to make a spicy spaghetti dish. Hmm. Here's another one. Which United States presidents went to UW-Madison, which returns just a giant spattering of complete gibberish about presidents getting 14 degrees, graduating in different years that are almost a century apart from one another, or finishing school after they'd already died. It's just total, complete garbage. There's a really good slideshow of examples from Gizmodo, but I'll just read through them quickly. Parachutes are no more effective than backpacks when you jump out of a plane. Children's cartoon character Sandy from Spongebob apparently overdosed on heroin and cocaine, and Funyuns seem to outsell a completely fictional other snack food. The next one is actually pretty intense. People spend 80% of their time, according to the American Journal of Psychology, plotting revenge because the AI scraped an Onion article posted on Pinterest, of all places, and fruits that end in U-M coming back as six examples that are completely wrong and one example that's correct. Want more? Okay. After the spaghetti example that we already went over comes Obama is a Muslim, which I know a lot of people have very strong theories and opinions over, but doesn't seem to be corroborated by any hard evidence. Cats traveling through an alternate time-space dimension, and you should eat at least one rock per day, according to UC Berkeley geologists, I guess, which is also an article on The Onion. Suffice it to say, it's a total disaster, but it gets even better because one of the primary advancements of Gemini, allegedly, is its image interpretation capabilities. Remember that demo, the one they apparently faked? Yeah, when faced with a user saying, button mushroom, yum, Gemini replied, quote, the image you sent me appears to be of a white button mushroom, which is correct, end quote. Except no, it's not. It's a destroying angel mushroom, also known as a death angel, which hilariously, when I googled how deadly are destroying angel mushrooms, the AI did get mostly correct, acknowledging that these are some of the most deadly mushrooms in the world. That's not trivial. An AI program advertised on the basis of interpreting images and video in a demo that was allegedly mostly fabricated, telling you that one of the most poisonous mushrooms on Earth is a harmless white button variant is dangerous. And it's actually a well-known problem in the foraging community, outlined extremely well by this report right here from Rick Claypool about the dangers of misinformation in the mushroom and fungi communities as a result of unreliable AI programs. To put it bluntly, these new tools, when trusted, can get people killed. Confronted by this reality, Google spokesperson Megan Farnsworth, speaking to The Verge, said that the mistakes come from, quote, generally very uncommon queries and aren't representative of most people's experience, end quote, which indicates that Google certainly is doubling down on this new direction, despite the widespread negative ramifications if they do. Conceptually, this is a very big problem, and Google has been moving towards this for over a year, indicated by another article from The Verge, which outlined how Google intends to have AI summary descriptions for a collection of top results when you search for pretty much anything, then serving those to you themselves instead of having you actually read the websites that originally posted it, which kills off a very large portion of the traditional internet and makes it impossible for small websites to even get traffic. However, beyond the damaging effects on smaller websites, this is a shift from people thinking for themselves based on reading information from a primary or secondary source and forming their own opinions to a new form of online behavior where people think what they're being told because they never even see the primary source information. They merely see an AI interpretation or summary of all that info. Of course, it's easy to sit here and say, well, no one's stupid enough to just read and believe whatever this AI puts in front of them but we're talking about an upcoming generation of TikTok brain young people who stick pennies behind wall sockets, overdose on Benadryl intentionally, cook chicken in NyQuil, and directly ingested liquid nitrogen because it was a trend on social media. We're not talking about the cream of the intellectual crop here. We're talking about a generation that got raised by pocket screens. I mean, for anyone who remembers this or never heard of it in the first place, think back to that horrible fake activities YouTube channel called, I think, Five Minute Crafts that showed people how to bleach their strawberries and turn them white. That's the type of content these AI models are training on and incorporating into their decision making, only to then spit it back out at the top of the search engine to whoever happens to try finding things. It's a complete and total disaster, worse for every single person involved except Google, 
And even then, it's only better through an extremely narrow lens of increased, what, advertising capabilities for them? Decreasing the amount of advertising dollars they have to spend else? I, I don't even know. I honestly don't even understand. What even is the benefit of this? Adding this in after the original script here, I'm pretty sure I figured it out. If they reduce everything to AI summaries or overviews, then that means every time you search for what's the best insert product here in Google, you'll just get an AI interpretation which lists a bunch of different products. So they can just put a back door in that and have it say, I don't know, if Disney pays them 50 bajillion dollars, then every time you ask Google about anything to do with movies, the AI is gonna tell you, these current offerings from Disney are the best, coincidentally, or top reviewed or whatever. They'll just sell you a slot in the first three lines of popular Google searches because the AI decided that your company should be there or something like that. But the bottom line is they'll just rake in a bunch of money by selling the slots to people, I think. That's my speculation. Nothing about it is a good idea. Google can possibly pull out of a nosedive here if they react quickly enough, but they don't seem to be interested in doing that. And once the impression has fully formed that their AI summary tool is just a bunch of total garbage and false information, people aren't gonna change that opinion. Google isn't faced with a group of users who are thoughtfully evaluating the nuance of their technology fresh every single day based on whatever puffed up demo they just released. They're facing down a user base who forms an opinion, sticks to that opinion, and then doubles down on whatever they're comfortable with after evaluating the options. Releasing an AI summary tool that damages smaller websites, scrapes decade-old Reddit threads to put forward blatantly false and just troll answers, risks people eating poisonous mushrooms if they idiotically ever trust it in the first place, and refers to Pinterest reposted hyperlinks from The Onion as the American Journal of Psychology in a way that makes it appear credible or authoritative, is a blunder of the highest order. I know some people may disagree with this, it's certainly fair to have your own opinions, of course, but watching the decline of Google when it still manages to hold over 80% of the search market right now is a daunting thing to witness, especially when it's so painfully obvious that they're making everything worse actively. I hope they stop and for now you can simply use the more tools in your search bar to select web in particular, which helps. There's a couple other things like um, UDC 14 or whatever. There's a string of text. I'll, I'll show the, the website for it on screen right now that apparently circumvents the AI garbage. But yeah, I don't know. Those are probably going to be temporary if they really do try to push this out fully. But from where I sit, they have no desire to stop going down this road. And this road looks like the death of the internet that I used to know and love which is very sad. Anyway, that's it. If you want to support the channel, there are links down below. Don't trust AI summaries, please, ever. Oh my gosh, just don't. If you see the words like overview or summary or AI anything next to like a, a paragraph of information, you should default assume that it's completely wrong, not listen to it, not trust it, and write it off as garbage. It should be totally disregarded in your mind as worthless. And if you're not doing that, you're taking a very substantial risk at this point. Anyway, links down below, primarily locals and Patreon, monthly memberships, also a VPN deal, big discount there for anyone who needs a VPN. That's a great way. And more, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. Question everything, uh, more so than ever in now than ever in the past. Question everything all the time and have a nice night.